the deep blue underneath the ocean will control the ocean wide from down, down underneath the sea. I'm Rear Admiral Thomas M. Dyke, who's retired. The men of the submarine force during World War II received their fair share of decorations. This chapter of the silent service deals with a man who was awarded one of those decorations. Although the circumstances under which medals were won could never be considered commonplace, in this instance the circumstances were particularly unusual. Ten July, nineteen forty four. The USS Sunfish rode quietly 250 feet below the surface of the Sea of Arcots. She was halfway through a seventh patrol, a patrol that up to now had been so full of action that for our skipper, Commander Ed Shelby, this was the first complete sleep period since leaving Pearl Harbor on June 22nd. But even during this time of well-earned rest, preparations were being made for the next day and the continuation of the war. Captain? It's 1900, Captain. You've been asleep 12 hours. Thanks, Paul. I feel like a new man. I'll be right up. <sighs> no, you don't understand, Dixon. I like cooking. But what am I going to tell the folks back in Tennessee? Man, they think I'm in the middle of a shooting war. Oh, Cookie, you make me sick. What, what, what are you, trying to be a big hero or something? Well, you are not hearing a word I'm saying. No. Now, look, how am I going to tell my kinfolks that I didn't even carry a gun? Cookie, you've been spending too much time bending over a hot stove. Ah, well, that's all right. You'll see. Mr. Mansell, he promised me. Yeah. Why don't you quit beating on the exec? My gosh. Ain't he got trouble enough? I don't care. He promised me. Yeah, yeah, and that's where he made his first mistake. by this time, so we'll patrol toward the west. See what action we can pick up along the northern route. Yeah, that's a good idea. Prepare a dispatch for come sub -pack. Tell them what we're doing. In the meantime, we'll surface and start converting number four ballast tank. I'll get on it right now. Oh, come on up, Cook. Thanks, Thought you might like some hot coffee, Captain. You just made it fresh. Oh, thanks. Well, I smell cinnamon rolls. Uh, yes, sir, Mr. Mansell. Uh, I brought you some, too. Hey, they're hot. Uh, yes, sir. I just finished baking them. Um, uh, Mr. Mansell, mm -hmm. uh, you didn't forget, did you? Hmm? Forget? Forget what? Oh. No. No, I didn't forget. Oh, thanks, Mr. Mansell. I knew you wouldn't forget. Well... Forget what? He wants another battle station. What do you mean? He's tired of cooking? No, I'm glad it's not that. I hope not. We never ate this good before he came aboard. There isn't a sub in the fleet that wouldn't swap any man they've got, including the skipper, to get their hands on him. No problem there, Captain. Well, then what's his beef? He doesn't think he's getting enough action as an ammunition passer. That boy's making an old man of me. All during the last patrol, now this one, insists he's got to have a gun or a torpedo station. Real ball of fire, isn't he? Well, why don't you give him one? Well, I haven't got the place for him. I tell you what, we could always use another man in landing or boarding parties. Give him a BAR and make him happy. Yeah, I might just do it. I might get him out of my hair anyway. Thank you, Captain. Paul, treat him carefully. He bakes a mean cinnamon roll. <laughs> Come up to periscope depth. Prepare to surface. Periscope depth, aye, aye. Stand by to surface. 
Cautiously, Sunfish poked a periscope above the surface, while Captain Shelby checked to make certain the area was clear. Working party on deck. When a fuel ballast tank was emptied, it was then reconverted to a ballast tank to lighten the boat for surface running. This was never a pleasant job, and here with a water temperature at 30 degrees, it was a cold, wet shore. While it went on, sharp watches were kept on sound and radar to make certain that no enemy ship would slip in undetected. Tom Subpacks acknowledged our message, Captain. Very well. And I told the cook about his new station as B.A.R. man. Make him happy? Happy? For a minute there, I thought he was going to kiss me. Just tell him you're married. Captain, number four ballast tank. Lieutenant Jameson's having trouble getting one of the bell crank pins in. The coal do it? Yes, sir. He says the bearings contracted. We'll have to file the pin down to make it fit. Well, how long will it take? At least another hour. Very well. But tell him to bear a hand. I don't like sitting out here in the open this way. Yes, sir. Hey, Dixon, did you hear? I got a gun. Yeah, I know, I know. So you got a gun. Now what do you want? Well, let me have it, will you, Dixon? What for? Well, uh, well, I, I ought to clean it. You know, get it ready. Yeah, well, it's cleaned and it's ready. Well, yeah, but I, I ought to get used to it. You know, get the feel of it. Uh, nothing doing. You ain't gonna run around this boat with a B.A.R. You will get it when there's a gun action. And not until. Bridge, radar contact. Bearing 325, range 19,000 yards. Very well. Paul, station the tracking party. Aye, aye, sir. Jameson! Sir? How much longer? Not too long now, sir. Very well. Hurry it up. We've got a contact. Aye, aye, sir. We're pushing. Conning tower, what do you make her? Looks like a big one, Captain. Kind of slow. The tracking party checked on the contact's course and speed as every revolution of the propellers brought it closer to the sunfish. What you got, Paul? She's doing about nine knots. Zigzag pattern of 07, 0110, 070, and 100. Captain. Jemison? We're finished, Captain. She's all yours. Good boy. Clear the main deck. Radar? What's the range now? 5,000 yards. She's zigging away, Captain. That's right. Time for the next zig. Right, 10 degrees rudder. All ahead flank. Right, 10 degrees rudder. All ahead flank. We'll get up ahead of her and wait for her to make the next zig back. Paul, battle stations. Ready for torpedo and gun action. Aye, aye, sir. Battle stations, torpedo and gun action. Sunfish race for an interception point with a so far unsuspecting target while all on board waited anxiously to see whether the enemy would get wind of them. Should be another zig coming up. Very well. Come left to course 280. Come left to course 280. Target turned and toward us. Radar. Keep those bearings coming. Set torpedo depth 10 feet. Set torpedo depth 10 feet. Target bang 359. Zero, zero, 001. Bang zero zero five. Steady on course two eight zero. All stop. All stop. Zero zero seven. Zero zero seven. Zero zero seven. Bang steady on zero zero seven. What's the range? One five double O. Steady on zero zero seven. Target bearing 007. Range 125 double O. I've got him. 
Final bearing and shoot when ready. Aye, sir, standing by. Range. One zero five zero. Set. Fire one. Fire two. Fire three. Time. Five seconds to the first one. Three, two, one. Second one. Seven seconds. Five. Well, that one didn't miss. Uh, what's eating you now? I never got a chance to fire one single shot. Crackers. What happened to the bread? Captain, when you called battle stations, Aldridge was in such a hurry to get to his new gun, he dropped it. <laughs> so, my fault. But it could have been worse. Might have been carrying hand grenades. Nothing, Dixon. Uh, I was just, you know. Yeah, yeah, I know. You wanted to play with that gun of yours. Do you know what time it is? Hey, Dixon. I'm baking up a batch of rolls in the oven. I just started a fresh pot of coffee, too. S cinnamon rolls? Uh huh. All right. For the next couple of days, things were comparatively quiet on board the Sunfish. Contacts were made, six of them. But each time the Sunfish closed a potential target, the contact turned out to be friendly. The respite was welcome. With the good luck they'd been having, the crew knew that there'd be lots more action before they left the area. Dixon, uh, you want some coffee? No, no, thanks. No. Uh, a sandwich, maybe? No. You know, it's a funny thing. One of the BARs is missing. No kidding. No kidding. Now, what do you suppose happened to it? Well, uh, gee, I, I don't know, Dixon. Uh, you don't think one Let's of the guys... Let's have it. Me? You. N now, look. Dixon, I've been meaning to talk to you about something for a long time. 
Now, you know, when I'm busy cooking back here and they call a gun action, it's a long distance to that aft battery. You wouldn't want me to be late to my stations now, would you? Give. Well, now, look, you're, you're being hasty. Can't we talk this over? Uh, uh, look, I got a steak about yay big. It's right here in the freezer. No, no, no dice, no dice. Let's just have the gun. You're a hard man, Dixon. Why don't you want to keep this thing in the rack where it belongs? Suppose somebody else took it. All right, suppose somebody does. Oh, well, now, you know those guys, Dixon. They might foul it up. Yeah. It's pretty quiet around here lately, Paul. I've been thinking of trying to find a busier corner. Getting bored, Captain? Oh, we'd lug those torpedoes all the way out here. It'd be a shame to lug them all the way back. Yeah, I see your point. According to intelligence... Radar you're contact, Captain. Two pips bearing 110, about 5,000 yards. Elton, bearing 110, can you see anything? Not a thing, Captain. Visibility is about 500 yards. Ball tracking party. Aye, aye, sir. Come left to 335. Come left to 335. Aye, sir. Lieutenant Van Horn to the conning tower. It's three pips now, Captain. Five. How many? Now it's four. I'm sorry, Captain. These pips are all confused. Stay with it, son. Paul. Battle stations, gun action. Battle stations, gun action. <laughs> it's hard to say. I checked out all right, but some of those contacts may be side pips. All right. Let's go below and take another look. Aye, aye, sir. Captain, we're out of the fog. It's as clear as a bell. Right full rudder, all ahead flank. Right full rudder, all ahead flank. No sense in scaring him off if we can avoid it. Let's get back in the fog and see if we can trail him from astern. Any change? No, sir. Range is opening, but I still get from two to six pips all in a group. Let's split the difference. Make it four. You got any ideas, Paul? Well, pips aren't too big. I guess it'd be some kind of trawlers. Mm, makes sense. Let's see if we can't put a debt in their fishing trade, huh? Captain, we're back in the fog. Steady on course 180. Steady on course 180. Now, if there are only four of them. Captain, I've lost them. What was your last range? 6,000 yards. Come right to 270. Come right to 270. Let's see if we can cut back across their track. Contact, I got him, Captain. Three pips bearing 090. Come left to 235. Come left to 235. What's the range? 4,000 yards. Fall back one third. Fall back one third. You take it, Paul. I'll be on the bridge. Aye, aye, sir. Radar, what's the range? 800 yards. Get five pips, Captain. Very well. Look out. Keep a sharp pips up with starboard bow. Ships off the starboard beam. Ships off the port bow. Ships dead ahead. Holy smoke, there's a million of them. All back one third. All back one third.
Bravo running. Port back full. Port back full. Starboard ahead flight. Starboard ahead flight. For two solid hours, Sunfish engaged in a wild surface duel. The odds 14 to 1 at quarters which made it almost hand-to-hand -hand combat. Time and again, Captain Shelby's brilliant maneuvering of his ship saved them from suicidal ramming. But it was the ship's cook, Teddy Eugene Aldridge, who was given credit for saving the ship and crew. Where's the ammo? Wherever the firing was hottest or the danger greatest, there was Aldridge to add his firepower where the need was greatest. Nobody, least of all Aldridge, was ever able to explain how he covered so many places in so short a time. Cookie, wait a minute. You know, I don't dig you, boy. Huh? First you make a big deal about how you love this thing like it was your wife, and now you treat it like it was nothing. <laughs> well, you just don't understand, Dixon. Oh. If I'd have gone home and told them that I never fired a shot, why, they'd have run me right out of town. Well, finally got my shots in. Us cooks have our pride. I'll be back in a moment with our special guest. And now it is my pleasure to introduce to you the hero of the Sunfish's amazing engagement, Mr. Teddy Eugene Aldrich. Mr. Aldrich, they tell me you were a one-man Navy during that fight. I don't know about that, Admiral. All I do know is it was a pretty good fight while it lasted. Captain Shelby tells me you're one of the best cooks he ever sailed with. Do you still do any of it? I sure do. I enjoy cooking. I learned how aboard the sunfish, and I guess the reason I got such a bang out of it was that the boys seemed to like what I cooked. For a cook to win a decoration for personal combat in a submarine is highly unusual. As far as we can find out, you're the only one who did. I appreciate them giving me a medal, Admiral. But I can tell you one thing. I never thought much about it during that fight. With all the lead flying around, we were too busy trying to stay alive. That's something I can well believe. Mr. Aldridge, it's been an honor and a privilege having you with us. Thank you, Admiral. Please be with us again when we bring you another true and exciting story from the files of the silent service. <laughs> Down, 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 go down, down, 
Deep blue underneath the sea.